Advent candle, the candle of joy, and we welcome them. Uh, our brother uh, Jesse spent 20 years in ministry of the United Methodist Church, maybe over 20, has retired as pastor at Sweetwater <coughs> United Methodist Church in Alabama. Sweetwater, <laughs> Alabama. It just doesn't get any better than that, does it? After visiting the senior center down the road a little bit, and he saw the, our church. He looked us up online, and in 2015, they started attending, and we haven't been able to get rid of them since. <laughs> so they're they're here, and they uh, uh, just uh, a wonderful, wonderful blessing to our church and congregation. Uh, and uh, Brother Jesse and Miss Venice also lead and teach the adult Bible Sunday school class. And so, thank you this morning for blessing us. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, we have uh, several prayer requests, and uh, because of the children's program, I'm just going to pray, give you an opportunity during that time of prayer to just lift up a name of an individual the Lord knows their need even before we ask. And then I'm going to move right into asking the Lord to bless the offering. Uh, and then we'll have the ushers to come to receive the offering uh, uh, immediately following. Uh, want to remind you again that as uh, we receive the offering, please be in prayer for all of our needs. And one of the great needs we have during this time of year uh, certainly uh, is uh, uh, in giving our finances, our, our tithes. You know, Whenever we, excuse me, join the, uh, the church, part of our membership vows were to support our church with our prayers, presence, gifts, and service and witness. And throughout the years, you have done a wonderful and amazing job of doing that. Over the last year or so, because of people moving off and deaths, uh, we've seen a decrease in the amount that we normally would receive naturally into the offering. So we were asking each church family and each person if they would to give their best gift uh, at above and beyond what you give so that we can finish the year uh, and, and, and in a good light, as they say, in the black and not in the red. Well, since I mentioned that last Sunday, uh, we had uh, uh, a little something happen. We, we have a fire panel aboard that operates and controls our sprinkler system in the church, right? How many knew that? Some of you, there you go, well we do. We're required by the county to have such a device and it has to be operating all the time and if not, the insurance uh, won't cover us and if we're not covered by insurance, the bank won't give us money. So you see how all of this works, don't you? It's a racket, right? Well, anyway, uh, the fire board went out. You're right, several thousand dollars to replace that. So your best gift during uh, Christmas will help us take care of that expense along with others that just keep coming. So we thank you so much ahead of time for your gifts. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we know that in all things, you are working to good. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> we love you. We are called Jesus. according to your purpose, and that is to Amen. make Jesus known, to spread the gospel, Amen. to meet the needs of the poor. The yes, Lord. Uh, Lord, we're called according to that purpose, and we do love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We're just so we're so appreciative of grace that you give to us whenever we mess up. I don't know any other way to put it but that, Lord, Amen. because we are a people that at times we forget yes, your graciousness and your mercy. Yes, Lord, I pray today that your hand of grace and mercy would be upon each person. We pray for healing and hope yes. and restoration and help for those, Lord, that we have been praying for for quite some time and for those that we will now name openly and in our hearts. Amen. Irma Hudson. Kathy. 
Father, we thank you that you hear our prayer and that your grace is sufficient to meet each and every one of our needs. We give you thanks and praise. And now as we receive the morning offering, may you bless it and may you help us to be good stewards of all that you put into our charge. For we ask in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 When our ushers come forward.
this time if they'd like to go to children's church that they can be released as we sing Jesus was a chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were the shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning that had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in their heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
was about memory loss. I don't remember very much about the article. But <laughs> Now the article said that the average adult loses nine items a day. Most of us uh, regularly lose things like keys. How many have problems with keys? You know, I, I have a, a little hanger on my back when I come in through my back side door from the garage and has my keys. As soon as I walk in, I hang them there every time. Everybody else is looking for their keys. And I said, you know what? There's a key rack on that door. When you walk in, if you would just hang them right there, there you go. That was free, by the way. <laughs> I didn't add anything. To, anyway, wallets. How many look for their wallets? No, oh, I have a drawer when I come in. I have to do these things. TV remotes. My recliner eats up my TV remote. <laughs> Thank God for the little Velcro flap on the back of the new recliner so you can just, you know, pull that up and stick your hand in there and grab your remote every time. Glasses. Phones. Uh, it's not surprising, or maybe it is, that men are twice as likely to lose their phones than women. That's not true in my house, but anyways. Uh, one study concluded that the average person misplaces, as I said, nine things a day and spends on an average of 20 minutes looking for lost items. Why does this happen? Well, there's actually a psychology and a science behind it all that comes down to a breakdown of attention and memory. Go figure, right? Okay. When we misplace our belongings, According to psychologists, we fail to activate that part of our brain responsible for encoding what we're doing. And it's called the hippocampus. It's the part of the brain responsible for taking a snapshot of preserving the memory in a set of neurons that can fire later and activate the memory. You got it? Okay, we lose things when we do not have a clear reference point of when or where we put down objects like our keys and our glasses. <coughs> Experts tell us one of the ways we can improve our memory is through practicing mindfulness. I just had to ask my wife, she tells me that all the time. <laughs> We do this by stepping back, calming our thoughts, focusing on the present moment, and take a snapshot of the moment. I've been doing a lot of thinking about Advent. With all the distractions of the seasons, with all that's going on in our individual lives, all that's going on in our denomination, all that's happening around our church. I think that we can lose more than our physical possessions. I think it's entirely possible that we can misplace our hope, our peace, our joy, and even our love. One of the ways, according to the article, and I believe that we can transfer this over to the spiritual realm, we can improve our Advent memory is through practicing mindfulness. We do this by stepping back, by calming our thoughts, by focusing on being present in the moment. Because Advent gives us the opportunity to refocus, to become mindful of what we have received in Christ's coming. And what have we received? Well, the scripture <clears throat> that has been proclaimed all morning long is that we have received joy, right? How many woke up this morning just filled with joy? That's what I thought. Yeah, four or five of you. The others have misplaced it somewhere. Now, I know that we're familiar with the story. The angels appeared to the shepherds. 
I want to key in on that verse 10. If you have your Bibles open or you can just trust me. You remember the angels appeared to the shepherds and they said, do not be afraid. And that's one of the most common commands in all of scripture, right? Jesus said, do not be afraid because I have good news. I'm going to bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. The phrase good news is euangelion in Greek. How many knew that? <laughs> Only me. That's because it's all Greek to you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, euangelion is where we get the word evangelism. It can also be translated gospel, which is good news, right? And in the Christian vernacular is where we get the word great or good tidings or glad tidings. I should say.